This is a response video um, to the design review video filmed at Factor E Farm uh, about redesigning both the universal rotor um, and the quick connect wheels uh, and making them at least interchangeable if not completely identical to each other. Uh, here's the Guatemala team's version of the quick connect wheel that they recently did. Comparing the universal rotor with the quick connect wheel assembly reveals that they're virtually uh, the same thing uh, built for the same purpose and that is to harness the torque generated by a hydraulic motor and use that torque to do work with a tool um, in this case to turn a wheel or rotate a auger. Um, uh, both these items also serve the purpose of constraining any forces that are exerted back on them um, by the work tool such as uh, when the auger is pushed into the ground or um, the uh, heavy load is carried on the life track or the life track is uh, steered in one direction or the other. They're both made up of the same three interfaces uh, here, here, and here, and uh, each of these interfaces has um, two components, two sides to it. Um, in this case, uh, the power interface, um, which has the motor and the mounting plate, is uh, also duplicated on the quick connect wheel assembly uh, with the motor and the mounting plate here and here. And uh, the anchor interface serves to anchor the universal rotor or quick connect wheel um, to a solid machine or um, something stationary. So you have uh, the attachment that goes into the receiver on um, something solid or stationary such as the life track um, quick attach plate or the frame of the life track here. And then you've got the tool interface um, with a shaft that connects to the tool um, and uh, that would be the shaft here that connects to the wheel which is acting as the tool on the quick connect. Aside from sharing those three interfaces um, both these current uh, design renditions also share this auxiliary board, uh, bearing support shaft um, here and here and here. Since they both share these three common interfaces, hopefully we'll be able to merge them into one unit without too many compromises. This takes a lot of consideration, considering the hydraulic motor will possibly be used on 26 of the um, 50 uh, GVCS tools. Plus it will affect the performance of any machine that doesn't use a universal rotor directly but is connected to or used in conjunction with the life track, the micro track, or the truck since those machines will be powered by the universal rotor. And it will also probably be used on uh, many machines in addition to the GVCS50 uh, like the cold saw. You multiply uh, that by uh, needing to consider how each of these three interfaces will perform um, for each of those applications and also you consider um, in the future electric motors are going to need to be harnessed in a similar way and it's really a lot to consider. But I'm going to assume that this awesome idea is going to work so for the remainder of this video I'll refer to the quick connect assembly instead as a universal rotor um, when being used as a wheel assembly or wheel drive. As you know, because you just broke a shaft on the life track yesterday, um, all three of these interfaces serve a structural purpose. Um, so uh, they should probably be designed so that they can be scalable in either thickness um, or uh, dimension by using bigger tube or um, thicker material uh, at the discretion of the replicator. Now for applications where um, larger forces are exerted such as using uh, bigger tires or 
uh, bigger augers or bigger life tracks or tractors. The universal rotor as a whole must be able to uh, withstand extreme uh, radial forces, uh, axial forces, um, for all the applications that it'll be used for. Uh, it should be light as possible to be uh, able to be moved by hand by uh, feeble villagers and uh, it should be compact and it should be able to adjust the direction of the shaft um, from vertical to horizontal uh, and any uh, um, any axis in between in relation to the machine it's anchored to for uh, whatever application um, is being done. We can't assume of course uh, that the motor is designed to handle the forces that it is exerting uh, by rotating the work tool so we just need to consider uh, those um, axial and uh, radial forces uh, that the work tool is exerting back on the universal rotor. These forces are either the result of the motor trying to rotate a tool that doesn't want to rotate or the machine um, exerting force on the tool or the exerting force on the universal rotor which is exerting force on the tool which is exerting force back on the universal rotor. In the case of um, pushing down with the hydraulic loader arms um, in the case of the auger or in the case of in the case of the life track supporting a uh, heavy load like carrying a bunch of bricks. Hydraulics are one of the most inefficient forms of power transmission there are. You have lots of power losses uh, in the hoses. You got uh, lots of power loss uh, in heat that's generated and lots of friction. Um, it's also one of the most expensive and complicated uh, um, forms of power transmission but on the flip side it's also one of the most versatile and robust ones. This is mainly due because of the power density of the hydraulic components like how much power you can get out of a small little compact motor or hydraulic ram. So to recap we have uh, six design points to consider uh, size, weight, uh, strength and rigidity. We don't want it to break but we also don't want it to be vibrating and flexing or rattling around um, our shaft orientation and uh, we've also got uh, the interface versatility. We want it to be able to attach to the widest range of tools and motors possible without compromising too far on the first four design points. Also we want to be able to anchor it to any machine necessary. Uh, the quick attach plate is fairly large and easy to anchor to but you might want to stick it on the end of the backhoe and reach into a trench or a hole um, you also might want to put it on a saw blade or the wheel trencher and you don't want to get in the way of what you're doing and you don't want to uh, reduce uh, the depth of your cut. And of course number six, uh, simplicity, ease of fabrication and cost. Uh, so we've got to consider each of these things, uh, how each of the three interfaces are going to perform um, on each of the machines or applications that it's going to be used in.